In this video, I will show you how to refactor your code without extending Web Security Configurer Adapter class. The easiest way to solve this problem is to use a two-step approach where we first upgrade to a 2.7 boot version as there is no need to rewrite your security rules at all. Just changing the signature of the method and marking it as a bean will get you going. The second step is to do some refactoring for pattern and expression methods. You can also do everything at once, but for a bigger size application, it is a safer path to do a version at a time. In this video, we would quickly tackle the first step and I will leave the link to the second video where we will change HTTP security methods. But before we get to the code, let me show you which versions are affected. The Web Security Configure Adapter was deprecated in Spring Boot version starting from 2.7 and Spring Security version starting from 5.7. It is completely removed, however, in the Spring Boot version starting from 3.0 and the Spring Security version starting from 6.0. Now, since we got the version business out of the way, let's jump into the code editor to do some refactoring. We will look how to update HTTP security, web security, and GDPC authentication. Here, there is a demo application with some basic security rules configured. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to my POM file and update to the latest 2.7 version. So if you have a Gradle project, you'll just navigate to the build Gradle file and update your version over there. Then I'll go to my, I will go back to my security config and we'll remove the web secure configure adapter class. So there are a couple of things that I need to do next. The first, I will change the visibility to public. I'll change the return type to security uh, filter chain and I'll return security filter chain by calling a build method on HTTP security. I'll use the build method on it. So then I will go ahead and I will instantiate the bean and remove this unnecessary import. Uh, there's an error, already it's gone. And I'll have a public endpoint here that should be publicly available. So that's pretty much it to test this configuration. I will show you that I have a basic application control that has a public and private endpoints. If I navigate back, I will start my application. I will go to my browser and I'll try to go to uh, localhost public, we'll see that it works. And if I navigate to private, uh, I'm being redirected to a login page. It's probably because I have login enabled. If I'll disable that, I will restart my application and I will do it again. Uh, I will go to a public. So the public is working. I'll go to private and private returns us 403, which indicates that the page is not accessible. Therefore, our rules work as expected. In the next part, I will show you how to refactor web security. Okay, let's now let's take a look at how to change web security methods. So for example, you have a configuration like this, and I will add another public and point and uh, in my controller I would also add my another public point so all we have to do here is we have to change the return type to web security customizer We'll have to remove the parameter here and we have to return a Lambda function. So all is left is to instantiate the bean. And if I run this application, we can see that localhost 8080 and I'll go to another public endpoint. Oh, I've been redirected to the login page. So these two don't actually work together well. If I comment out the security filter chain bean, 
and restart my application. Then I navigate to uh, another public endpoint. We can see that this is working. So Spring actually recommends to use matchers inside the HTTP security rather than using them in a web security. So in order to refactor this, we can simply move this line over here to here and add permit all. So if I remove the web security now and restart my application, we can see I restart the page we can still see that this is working. So now, since we got web security updated, let's take a look at how to refactor GDBC authentication. So for the GDBC authentication, we'll use embedded H2 database. And the one that I'm going to initialize right now, data source, I'll do data source. I'll mark it as a bean. And I will return new embedded database builder. And I will set type as embedded database H2. And I will build it. The next step, I will write old configuration that the one that you're going to see before refactoring uh, without web security configure adapter. So we'll type protected void configure. I'll use authentication manager builder. And I'll say throws exception. And in here, I will declare user details as our user and I will initialize a new user with default password encoder, but this is just for demo purposes. In reality, you would use something more secure like Bcrypt or Argon2. And I will say that username is John and password will be secret password. Um, I will assign the role user and I will build it. So the final part is to uh, save this user in a database and make them able to access our application. So we'll say auth uh, JDBC authentication with default schema data source. I will use our data source there and I will say with with user, our user. So because that will be most likely extended, I will put the override, but that's incorrect for now. So <clears throat> this is just an example of how it is most likely will look currently in your application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refactor this without using web security configure adapter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove our override annotation and I'll type uh, a bean so that we're going to instantiate the bean and the bean will be of type user details manager, which is an interface. I'll change the access method to public um, and I will name that bean user details manager. So the next step is I'm going to do is I'm going to remove our auth uh, authentication manager builder that we have here. And I'm going to replace this with a user details manager implementation, which is called GDBC user details manager, and we're going to return it here. So we'll say new GDBC user details manager, and I'll pass a data source, which is um, we'll have here.
and I'm going to create a new variable called um, GDBC user details manager. Last part is we need to create our user here and I will pass our user and I'm going to return GDBC user details manager. Uh, return G GDBC user details manager. Okay, so now we are ready to test our implementation. And uh, oh, so one piece I forgot to add is I need to use a uh, default user location in the schema. So I will add add script and I will say JDBC DAO implementation and I'll say default user schema DD allocation. I'll restart my application. And I will navigate to localhost 8080. Let's say public. Uh, we can access it, correct. And we'll say private. So we can't access private. I actually want to enable our form login. So I'm going here. And I'm going to restart again. So if I restart it, we navigate to a login page. And if I type John, and I'll type secret password and try to sign in, we'll see, I can see my private file. So just to double check that we actually have this user, I will go to H2 console, I need to give it access right here. And I need to disable um, header security headers, and also CSRF protection. So if I restart my application, and navigate to H2 console. So I'll type local host 8080 H2 console, and I'll have user SA and password, uh, no password, test connection. I'll connect and I'll go to the users. I will see, and we have user John with our default encrypted password. And this is how you refactor GDBC authentication to be used without web security configure adapter. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope you find it helpful. So I will see you in the next one.